Hi everyone, welcome to Traveling with Nets. My name is Pia and I am so very happy that you're joining me here in Texas today for a little chat about my yarny adventures. I am still in Texas, still enjoying it immensely. We've had some beautiful spring days. Today though, I do think we have a thunderstorm brewing. I'm looking out the window. It's kind of gloomy and dark. Uh, it's very, very humid. You can almost like smell the ozone in the air. While I really appreciate a good thunderstorm, I do hope that it will wait until I finish recording because I think my microphone is going to have enough on its plate, picking out my voice over the ambient noises that I want to be in a family home. But yeah, I am wearing one of my two finished objects for this week. This is my Chima tea and you haven't even seen it in process. I whipped this one up. Uh, I started Monday night, knit for a couple of hours. Yesterday, which was Thursday, I finished it in the morning. So it is a very, very quick knit. It is uh, an all over lace t-shirt. This lace pattern is so easy. It's a short repeat. It's a six round repeat consisting of two, three round repeats, if that makes any sense. But you have this sort of stripe situation going where you're always like, yeah, I should put it down, but I just want to put in the next round or the next round or the next. So it basically flew off my needles. I knit this one in, uh, in some yarn I had in my collection over here. Uh, I love this cotton in the black colorway. I used three balls for, for my size, which means that I got a beautiful summer tea for $12. That's okay. I can live with that. The original was knit in a hand-dyed Pima cotton. So of course that is the luxury version, but I really like the budget-friendly version too. One of my testers knitted up in Drops Bell, which that was also beautiful. So what you're gonna want for this tea is a DK weight. If you want a summer tea, I would definitely go for a plant-based fiber. Uh, but there was also a tester who knitted up in wool and it was beautiful too. This tea comes with a history. And I'm gonna save the history for later. For right now, suffice it to say that I will be releasing this pattern on Monday so that you all have plenty of time to whip up one or more little summer teas before it really starts heating up. And now we are talking Northern Hemisphere. I realize that if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're not preparing for summer, you are saying goodbye to summer. But then you might want to knit the woolen version. This is also the kind of tea that is very easy to modify uh, because it is so simple and so basic. I am going to just stand up so that you can see it. So here she is, my Chima tea. And I can see that the camera is having a lot of trouble picking this up, probably because it's black. But yeah, it is a simple tea. Uh, as I always do, I made it a little bit longer in back. I have some short rows only up here in the ribbing. So here the ribbing is much shorter than it is in the back. I don't know if, if the camera is going to pick that up, but all the short rows are placed in the ribbing just because it is difficult to work short rows in an all over lace pattern like this one. But yeah, very, very simple, easy, addictive knit. And I am definitely gonna have it in all the colors 
for the summer. With such a basic shape to your tee, it is so easy to shorten the sleeves or lengthen them, do a long sleeve version or a bracelet sleeve version that would actually be beautiful you can lengthen or shorten the body i do give some instructions in the pattern as to how to do that uh, i recommend that if you change the length that you do so in either half or full repeats of the lace pattern just because that's going to look more neat and with a three round repeat for a uh, a three rounds for a half repeat that's definitely gonna give you uh, just the amount of extra length that you are gonna need but yeah I am very very pleased with this one and as I said I am gonna knit myself a couple more for the warmer months I do have a silver gray I shared this one on Instagram uh, but I could do with a white and also with a either a soft brown or an olive green for when the skin is sun-kissed and you just want something light and a little bit moody to put on. Uh, yeah. And I mean, a three-day knit, I can fit that into my schedule. The pattern is going to come out on Monday. There's going to be a discount code for the first week you will get 15% off with the code CHIMATI. Uh, I'm also gonna post this on Instagram. If you follow me there you'll be able to see much more of the things that I am working on. Obviously I'm on Instagram much more often than I am on YouTube and that is also where I will be sharing things like discount codes and knit-alongs and all those kinds of things. But this one, as gorgeous as it is, and I can't stop looking at it, I'm sorry, this is crazy, but this is not my only finished object. I also finished my cat number five this week. Here you go. This huge cozy sweater that I can't wait to wear in Danish summer, even in Italy in the evenings. For the days and the evenings that are just a little bit cold and you just want something to snuggle up in, but you don't want to get dressed dressed. So my jean shorts, my tee, and then there's one on top, then I'm going to be so cozy. This is obviously the sweater that I knit, uh, or I started knitting during our knit-a-thon, hence the name, Cat Knit A Thon. Uh, yeah, it is quite a basic sweater, a round yoke, a long sleeved sweater. I knit this a couple of sizes larger than I usually would. Uh, I gave myself more than 20 centimeters of ease. That's more than eight inches of ease just to get this super cozy feel. I was when I started knitting it. I was knitting away into the evening. The light was not really good. And I thought, oh my God. I didn't pick the right colors for this color work. I thought there was not enough contrast. It looked like the colors just blended together. But as soon as I have it in full daylight, I am really pleased with, with the contrast here. I think it's just the right amount. I'm not necessarily a fan of the high, high contrast. But of course, I want my pattern to show up. I I haven't woven in the ends. Uh, and there's a reason for that. As I was finishing up this sweater, I was this this was my conversational knitting. It was the thing that I would just zoom around and around on while talking and playing and having a good time. I wasn't paying attention. In the pattern, I instruct 
to change into the contrasting color for the last rows uh, and the bind off. I completely forgot about that. So I am, that's why I didn't uh, weave in the ends. So I am gonna pick out the bind off and redo it in the way that it is supposed to be done according to the pattern. So there's that, but it's blocked. This one is not. <laughs> this is actually not blocked. I did finish it yesterday in the morning and I was about to block it. But then I thought, no, I want to wear it tomorrow for the podcast. So I'm going to block it later. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with how the lace opens up just with wearing it. So maybe it's not even necessary to block it. This one really needed a good blocking and it got one and it is just the way I wanted it to be. This pattern is going to come out sometime in May because there's a few steps I need to take. It has been tested, but in the test phase, I actually had to change some things in the construction up on the yoke. So while that has been tested, I still want to knit it myself. I have some yarn that I want to use for it back in Denmark. So when I come back, I'm going to knit the yoke on the, the following the new pattern with the new tweaks that I made just to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. And then I'm going to need to do some translations and some, yeah, little things and then this will be ready to be published as well. I do have the yarn that I'm gonna need to do the, the bind off. This is some baby alpaca sorry from Gan Specialisten. A very very soft lovely yarn that comes in these huge skeins. As you can see I have I have used this for the sweater, but still I have so much left. The brown is a combination uh, of yarns also from Gan Specialisten. It's their Italian Merino and their brushed mohair, a combination that I have worked with before. I also used it in my vesti thing. So I knew that I was going to love that. And I really like how these two yarns uh, work together. I'm a big fan of putting different yarns together in a project just because you get that extra fun of playing with texture as you're playing with color already. I love that and I love that they both have about the same amount of fluff and they just they work together so very very well. So two finished objects. I didn't work a ton on my cat number five, but that was still some work to be done. And this one, as I said, flew off the needles. I have three active whips that I want to show you. One is a tail of wool. Maybe I'm going to show you that one first just to share all of my stupidity, carelessness. We can call it whatever. The other one is a part of the knit along that I'm running. And the third one is my comfort knit for when I just need something really, really simple. But let's start with the tale of woe, the project that makes me need a comfort knit after dealing with that one. This is a project that I started some weeks back when I was in Mallorca. I was running out of whips. I ran to the local yarn store. I got some yarn that I really liked at the time. I... Anyway, I cast on for a beautiful t-shirt. The Eco 123 by Anke Strick. 
And what I really liked about it was the neckline that was kind of deconstructed. Uh, she also had some of this um, like funny deconstruction stuff going on on the body. But I was talking to one of the testers, Ina, my friend, who had tested this and she said, you know what, you, you're probably not going to need to do those folds on the body because they're going to be sitting at your waist. And we agreed, probably we don't want a lot of fabric bulking around our waist. So after separating uh, body and sleeves, I just knit a plain top. I did, as you can probably see, a few decreases on the sides. But other than that, I just knit it down. I even um, just bound off the stockinette to give it a rolled over hemline. That is, of course, going to need a lot of, the whole thing is going to need a lot of blocking. But there's something I need to take care of first, because I need the first sleeve. And it's beautiful, and it fits me really well. At first, when I had bound it off, it was a little bit too short, so I picked out the bind off, I re it. And yeah, it is definitely going to need a good blocking. And I think you can also see that, um, can you tell that my gauge changed after I picked it back up? I noticed that, but I was like, it's good, it's fine. Uh, it's not a problem that it is a little bit tighter at the end of the sleeve. That's just going to look nice once it's blocked. Then I needed to start the second sleeve. And as you can see, I have it going. I did not remember what size I knit the sleeves. I just, I couldn't dig it out of my brain what size I had picked. And because of this sleeve construction, it is kind of difficult to, to count your stitches uh, to find out that way what I did because you're doing some short rows, some decreases to make this really nice fit. I was at my wit's end. Then I remembered that I picked the size for the top based on the recommendations given in the pattern, which was probably a mistake. I think this is going to be a little bit too small. It's not going to have enough of the funny stuff going up on up here. But anyway, so I thought, well, then I probably also need that size for the sleeves. No, I did not. Apparently, I need at least one size smaller. I can tell. I don't know that it'll show on camera. It's difficult. I don't know that it'll show. Probably won't even show when I'm wearing it, but I'll know. I'll always know. And also, my gauge wasn't perfect. It, it was tighter than the gauge that I knit the body in. <sighs> Note to self, don't put away projects for weeks. Just don't do it. If, if you do it, then make an active choice to send them into hibernation. Write a little note, needle size, the size that you're knitting, any modifications you might have done, all of that good stuff. That I would have been very happy with past Pia if she had done that, but she didn't. So I am just going to, yeah find a solution. I definitely want this tea. I don't know that I am loving my yarn choice though. And you can tell this is really a tale of woe. In the beginning, I was really happy with this yarn and now I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called. I am going to put it right here. It is a single spun merino 
And I have worked with singles before and, and, and been happy with them. But this one seems to be, come on, you can focus. This one seems to be just very, very um, delicate. So even though I am knitting the sweater inside out, I only turned it with the right side out to show you. It is at all times uh, worked inside out to protect uh, the yarn. When I pack it away, I will take my yarn ball and put it inside the sweater and roll it up uh, so that it is protected. It is still disintegrating. I do hope that I can just go ahead, depill it, block it, and it will be beautiful. That's my hope. It doesn't count as a plan. I was just about to say that's my plan. That does not count as a plan. That is a hope, a wish, if you will. But I really, really want this t-shirt because it is so, so, so pretty. And I can see myself wearing this all throughout summer. Even though it's a woolen t-shirt, I really think that it will be so comfortable. So um, hopefully next time I record, I will have a finished tea to show you. And hopefully I will be very, very happy with it. For sure, the pattern is beautiful. The design is so clever. It's a good pattern, very, very well written. So all of these problems are all about me has nothing to do with the pattern. You can go ahead and knit that pattern and have so much fun and get a beautiful summer tea out of it. Now let's take a look at the whip that is a part of the knit along that I am running. It is living in this cute little project bag from the McKinney Knittery. I keep all of my current whips in this big project bag from the McKinney Knittery. So in here is my perfect little cardigan because I finally got the yarn. I was telling last week about how I found this perfect, perfect green yarn. I'm mid-row. That's crazy. That is bad podcaster. I was telling how I found this perfect green yarn. And I just fell head over heels in love with it. I was looking at a number of different green yarns and I liked them all. But then I found this. And then none of them. None of them. They just all lost their shine compared to this one. This is my green color. See how cool toned it is? Um, not too much yellow in it. I love this green. This is the Rerum Natura, their Ulysses base, and it is the colorway Printemps. And I love it. They only had one ball at the McKinney Nittery. I got that one ball and then I ordered uh, the rest online and I have received my yarn. So what I'm doing is because there is a difference between the um, uh, colors. What do you call it? Never mind. You know what I mean. Words are escaping me today. There is a difference between the one skein that I got and the five skein that was sent to me. So I am using the one skein for all of the ribbings and then I am using uh, the new skeins for the body and the sleeves. And I'm sure that there's going to be enough. I'm going to be fine if I am going to need the rest of that first ball, then I'm just going to helical knit it in because it's not like a huge difference. For sure, I'd be able to helical knit it in and it would look absolutely fine. But what I am knitting is, of course, my perfect little cardigan. We are doing a knit along for that pattern right now. It is a 
yeah, perfect little cardigan. The kind of cardigan that just sits well. It stays up on your shoulders. It doesn't drip in front. It, it just sits where it's supposed to sit. And it's because it is made with a compound raglan where you start by working only increases on the body. So it's kind of a saddle shoulder before you then go into some uh, raglan increases. It has this uh, pattern on the sleeves. It's gonna go all the way from the neckline ripping and all the way uh, down to the sleeve ripping. Just a, uh, a ripped panel with a faux cable in the middle. And that's the, basically the only interest <laughs> in this cardigan. It is just, yeah, so easy, so wearable. I have three already. I have ordered yarn for number five, a fuchsia, like hot pink. I'm all into the colors of the cardigans. And it is, of course, because all of my wardrobe is black, white, denim, and some earthy neutrals. I can add whatever color cardigan I like, and be good to go. So I am really enjoying knitting with some colors and makes me happy. If you want to join this knit along, there is still a discount for the pattern if you use the code PLCKAL, perfect little cardigan knit along. That is also what you're going to use on Instagram to enter for prizes. You use the hashtag PLCKAL. Then I'll be able to see your posts. And come June 1st, I am going to draw a winner. I'm going to put together a nice prize package and draw a winner come June 1st. So. Come join us. There's not a lot of rules. If you already have a perfect little cardigan on the needles, you can join with a whip. You don't have to finish. You just have to cast on and have some fun. It's all about having fun. And I, I really like the idea of us knitting something together. It gives me that sense of community that I appreciate so much in this knitting world. So yeah, Something that is bringing me a lot of joy. Um, maybe you want to, I didn't even show you the label, but yeah. It is just the label, the Ulysses. So, all I need to show you now is my comfort knit. The project that I whip out when I just want to sit and enjoy. It is one of those projects where I am loving the pattern. Um, I feel comfortable with the pattern. I have knitted a couple of times before. I'm loving the yarn and I'm loving the combination of the yarn and the pattern. So it is, of course, my Christmas Day cast on 23. Uh, and I am again knitting it just like I did my last one, short sleeved. So I'm using a very fine yarn, much finer than what is in the pattern to get an airy summery tee with some short sleeves. The yarn that I am using is Itoshimo, which is a merino silk blend. So this is a very soft yarn that still, it has some grip to it. I wouldn't say that it's toothy because it's very soft, but it definitely has some grip to it, which means that it carries itself beautifully. It's going to, it's going to look absolutely wonderful. And it is such a pleasure to knit with. It's one of those yarns actually like the Durerum Natura. It's one of those yarns that make you look at your knitting and think, I'm such a good knitter. Everything just looks so crisp and even. And yeah, one of those, one of those yarns that really helps you 
that gives you something rather than showing off every little mistake. So this is, as I said, my comfort knitting. This is what I wear about when I do my reading and knitting in the morning. And it is what I take when I just need some comfort and some joy. So, I of course have a lot of other whips that I haven't touched. Specifically my crochet dress, which I want to finish it, but it's just not the right project for what I'm doing right now where I'm living in a family and we are together almost all of the time having a lot of fun together when i'm working on that dress i am counting i am paying attention which is wonderful but it also takes me away from what i really want to do so that will have to wait i do have another crochet project that i am itching to cast on just look at this isn't that beautiful? Hexagon t-shirt. I want to crochet this. I probably, probably I change out the crochet in the bottom bands and the, the collar. I probably do knit instead. But the whole body of these just amazingly beautiful hexagons. I have the yarn, just saying. Also have a crochet hook and an empty project bag. I am definitely casting that one on at some point. I have to look, uh, look through the pattern uh, just to check if you're, if you're working the hexagons like individually and then um, putting everything together in the end because that would really make it a perfect summer project, travel project. Uh, when we come back to Denmark, we're leaving here on Tuesday, but that's not what we're talking about. When we come back to Denmark, we only have a few days there, then we're going on a cruise in the Mediterranean with my youngest son and his family. And a tiny portable project would be perfect for that trip. I have to look into it. I have to look into the construction and also see how complicated are these hexagons because if they're anywhere near as uh, attention demanding as my dress, then they're not going to be the perfect project for the trip. But if it's a relatively simple hexagon to work up, I could see that as my travel project. So... <gasps> So excited to figure that thing out. But yeah, that was it for the knitting. Um, the North Texas yarn crawl is going on in this area in these days. I haven't had a chance to enjoy any of the shenanigans. I don't know that I will be able, but um, yeah. Who knows? Priorities all of the time. I wish there were more hours in the day and more days in the life. In the beginning, I told you that this Chima tea came with a story. I'm going to whine you all about it now. So if you don't need to see me being all vulnerable and sad, I totally get it. I will suggest that you leave me for now and hopefully you will come back the next time. But if you want to hear the whole story, get settled and I will be all <laughs> about it. If you are a returning viewer, maybe you can remember that last year I was talking about how I was doing a lot of work behind the scenes. The work that I was doing was 20 designs for a book. I was uh, asked to do 20 new designs for a book. 
I worked myself like a cheap monkey. I mean, through sickness and health and thick and thin, what, whatever. I was working really, really hard on designing, pattern writing, sample knitting, and then the testing. Fortunately, there was an eminent um, tech editor on this project. She was a wizard. So once I had, I had made like the raw pattern, I would give it to her. She would tweak it. She would check it and she would grade it. So that took a lot of the load off of my shoulders, but still it was a massive undertaking. And I had agreed to do all this for free for the exposure that I thought my designs would get in a book. Looking back at it, I am thinking of Countess Ablaze and the Tits Out Committee, but you know, it was a good friend. I wanted to do it. And also I thought, well, there is going to be some benefits from the exposure of having your designs in a book. Then earlier this week, it came to my attention through the grapevine that the book was not going to happen. Um, so basically, I was not getting paid. And I was so sad. Especially when I then later found out, no, the book was not going to happen right now. It was going to happen later, but with a different designer. That hurt. I was like, ouch. Um, yeah, so that was, that was really, really sad. Um, but relatively quickly, I was able to turn it around and say, you know what? Now I have 20 designs that I love, 20 designs that I'm proud of, and I get to share them with everyone, one by one, not in a book, but actually just one design at a time coming out in the appropriate season. It, yeah, it's all good. I just had to remind myself that sometimes when we're hurt by someone, we have to remember that they are probably having some huge struggles that we know nothing about. It's not like everything is about us. There could be other things causing problems. So I learned a lot from this. I learned that if I want exposure, I should take my tits out. Thank you, Countess Ablaze. And I learned that there's no need to be so darn sad just because someone doesn't like what you're doing. As long as you're happy with what you're doing and you're not hurting anyone, you're good. So I am gonna be releasing these patterns. They, of course, need to be, uh, what do you do? It's put together, they're like raw text, they're patterns, but they're not, um, they're just raw text. So I need to do some photos and set them up and I need to translate them into English. So they're gonna come like little, little drops of happiness for me over the next many months. But the first one needed to be my Chima tea because I'm so excited for this tea. I really, really love uh, a lace tea with all over lace where it's not only on the yoke, but it's all over lace. And this is just so easy to work up. And again, $12 tea, even if you're gonna need an extra bowl, you're still at $16. 20 if you need two extra bowls, still a very, budget friendly summer tea. So uh, I am happy and proud to be able to put this out there. I hope that you will welcome it, that you will be kind to it. It needs some kindness. As I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a discount code. If you put in 
Chi Ma Tea, either on Ravelry or in my own web shop, you're going to get 15% off for the first week starting Monday. So, yeah. Other than that, th there's not much to tell. I mean, life is, is very slow, happy slow. We're playing, we are, yeah, we're having fun. I am still reading, not a whole lot, but I am reading a little bit every morning with my comfort knitting. I am, uh, my, my primary read over here is still the Maggie Sefton, The Doppel Knit Murders, because it's such a light and funny book. I was watching Wool Needle Hands, her latest episode was about knitting books, not, not like uh, non-fiction knitting books, like pattern books, but um, books that had some knitting in them. Um, and I got some really good suggestions from that episode. I really recommend you go watch it if you're a reader uh, and you haven't watched it already. Wool Needles Hands. Uh, I'm going to link the episode in the description box below together with everything else that I've been talking about throughout the episode. But yeah, as I said, we are leaving Texas on Tuesday. Because of me and the kids, we don't talk about it until the day before we travel. Because my eyes can't stop crying. But we're leaving Tuesday to go to Denmark. Then we have a few days there. And then, as I said, a cruise in the Mediterranean to celebrate my 60th birthday that is coming up in November. But it's never too soon to, to start the celebrations. That is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's going to be a cruise where we start out in Cannes, France, and then we go around to some of our favorite places in Italy. And we come over to uh, Palma, Palma di Mallorca and Barcelona. I have such high expectations for that cruise. It is a family cruise ship because we are bringing obviously our three Danish grandkids. Yeah, I see some good times ahead of me. So I think that was it for this week. It was also quite a lot, wasn't it? I really hope that you have something you love to work on, be it knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, whatever your craft is. Enjoy and until I see you next time, Keep knitting.